Coming up, Texas voters to decide on the tax rate approval for multiple school districts. Plus, the UTRGV Men's Soccer Club prepares for regionals. Details ahead. And a local band lost in limbo shares its musical journey. KVAQ-TV starts now. Hey, Vaqueros, welcome back. This is the ninth fall edition of KVAQ-TV. I am Tristan Cortez. Today is Monday, October 23rd, and at the top of the newscast... For the first time in 11 years, voters will decide on the approval of the tax rate for eight Hidalgo County school districts on the November 7 ballot. Andrea, tell us more about this. Some Hidalgo County residents will receive two property tax bills this year. The first one will not include school taxes, but the second one will. Tax Assessor Pablo Paul Villarreal Jr. says Hidalgo County will mail out the first consolidated tax statement by late October. After the November 7 election, Villarreal says eight school districts will provide their respective rates to his office, where the county will then process the tax rules. Once we have process the tax rules and we have the, the values and the tax rate, we'll come up with a, a tax statement. And then at that point, uh, we're gonna, the districts will be sending out the supplemental uh, statement to, to that community, to that district. The districts that will send out a second tax statement are Edinburgh CISD, Hidalgo ISD, La Jolla ISD, McAllen ISD, Mission CISD, Monte Alto ISD, PSGA ISD, and Progreso ISD. O'Hallon Demer and Castillo law firm partner Eden Ramirez explains school taxes will not be included in the first statement because voters have yet to approve the actual rate that will be imposed. The state of Texas did a tax compression on school districts. And what the tax compression did was that it reduced the total tax rate that a school district can have on a local property. And According to Ramirez, the upcoming election will provide school districts the opportunity to recover some of the funding from the tax compression to remain competitive with other districts in the long run. Edinburgh CISD Board of Trustees Vice President and Hidalgo ISD Superintendent Javier Salinas says the election is the only opportunity public schools have to maximize their funding. Edinburgh went down 18 pennies in taxes and we went up almost four pennies in taxes. So we've already decreased our taxes to our constituents and our taxpayers. But now we're just saying that we need those three, three pennies of that. Those affected can expect their second tax statement by the end of November. For KBAQ TV in Edinburgh, Andrea Flores. Pollution in oceans and rivers is a problem that has persisted for decades, but marine biologists are discovering that microplastics, items smaller than the tip of a finger, are now inside of biotic life, creating potential problems for the environment. As recently published in the science journal Environmental Chemistry Letters, researchers discovered microplastic contents in clouds over the mountains of Japan. The two key plastics investigated, polyethylene terephthalate and polypropylene, the former of which makes up items like plastic bottles and synthetic fibers, were detected in cloud water carried above Mount Noyama. With the findings in the report signaling the rise of microplastic pollution in bodies of water throughout the world, marine biologists are now evaluating the effects of pollutants on aquatic life. Fish scientist Wesley Franklin previously conducted a study on microplastics found in the fish in the Osakas of the Rio Grande Valley two years ago. Franklin says microplastics in small organisms such as fish can have big impacts on larger scale. It starts to not only get in their stomachs, but it'll get into their muscle tissue and into their like um, reproductive tissues. If this goes on for, you know, another 50, 100 years and humans start to get a lot of microplastics in their systems. It could have a lot of carcinogenic effects. It could have effects on reproduction. UTRGV Associate Director for the School of Earth, Environmental and Marine Sciences, Hudson Deo, has spent his 20 plus year career looking in depth at biotic life and its contributions to the nutritional health of South Texas water. Deo says as things stand right now, pollutants in South Texas water have yet to make a larger impact. Is the water quality pretty good? because we drink a lot of that water. So there's, of course, the Rio Grande, which I've spent quite a bit of time not recently uh, looking at. The river is actually in reasonably good shape considering how many people use the river. Deo says people can help keep water clean by being involved in their local aquatic ecosystems and helping with plastic and trash cleanup at South Padre Island. Is it a problem when people are told to be happy and positive even when they're not? A UTRGV professor tackles this question in her new book. Monica Chavez with the story. In a world where positivity is often encouraged, one book author recommends finding comfort in darkness. According to associate professor of philosophy and author of Night Vision, Mariana Alessandri, the book invites readers to tap into their dark emotions to not only observe them, but also learn how to fear them less. I'm sad most of the time. 
And so I wanted to write a book that would defend people like me from the idea that if we're unhappy, that means we didn't choose happy. Alessandri says she wrote Night Vision in an effort to help people destigmatize dark moods such as anger, sadness, and anxiety, as well as understand their importance of building empathy. Alessandri, who analyzes works from famous philosophers, including Gloria Anzaldúa, Miguel de Unamuno, and Aristotle, says she began writing the book in 2019. Alessandri says popular language like how are you is not helpful in recognizing others' dark moods, so she proposes a new language. Can we just banish that? Can we stop saying how are you and just say hi, it's nice to see you. Hi, that's all. We don't have to say how are you because it invites fakeness. Physics freshman Paul Diaz says viewing dark emotions as problems is not uncommon, but it is something that should be changed. I think that, much like Dr. Alessandri, I think that these emotions are just a natural part of being human. And I think that uh, embracing them and uh, learning from them help, helps us sort of connect with other people. Psychology professor Kathleen McWhorter says positive psychology explores how people thrive in life, but also acknowledges dealing with negatives and challenges is crucial for personal growth. When we ignore things or try to push them away, it makes them worse. And there's this um, famous quote that I like by Carl Jung, who said, what we resist persists. So basically, when we resist the anger or the fear or whatever it is, it's, there's going to be more of it that comes along. Night Vision is available in all bookstores and in a Kindle and audio version on Amazon. For KVAQ-TV in Brownsville, Monica Chavez. The UTRGV Men's Soccer Club is getting ready to compete against Texas Tech University in the regionals tournament this weekend. Julia Guerrero with more. The team has competed against universities such as Texas State, Tarleton State, and Trinity University, where they placed first in their division under the National Intramural Recreational Sports Association, Region 4. Hours of practice and strategy will soon be put to the test as the UTRGV Men's Soccer Club warm up for a regionals tournament again. UTRGB Men's Soccer Club Vice President Richmond Akarandu says this is the second year the team is heading to regionals. The team is in the same region as Texas Tech, Texas Christian University, and Texas A&M. So we finished our South region, was able to win that division again, so we're back-to-back -back champions. Along with making it to regionals, the soccer club was also selected to compete for the first time at a national level on November 27th through the 29th. Akrandu says the process of selection for the national level is similar to getting your name drawn from a bucket. We're region four, so there was about 10 to 11 teams So in a draw, so once they put your name in the bucket, you just pray that your name gets picked up. Akrandu says the team has been practicing intensely and focusing on conditioning and scrimmages to get ready for the next tournament. The team practices three days a week. On Monday, they focus on strength and conditioning where they run timed drills. Tuesday and Thursday, they focus on ball training. If they have a game coming up, they work on creating strategic plays. UTRGV Men's Soccer Club member Daniel Nusore says with their preparation, the team feels ready to go. It's been very uh, special for us and uh, having, having to make it to regionals is very exciting for us and we are, we are ready. To learn more about the UTRGV Men's Soccer Club, you can follow them on Instagram at UTRGVMClubSoccer. For KVAQ-TV in Edinburgh, Julia Guerrero. Lost in Limbo, a local band of five, began in a mission home and are working hard to make a name for themselves through their music. Dathan Trevino with the story. With three years of performing and seven songs in their discography, Lost in Limbo is just getting started. Amidst the pandemic in 2020, three friends, Caleb Vasquez, Emiliano Carrion, and Joseph Golez created Lost in Limbo, which at the time was just them jamming at Golez's house. With high hopes of creating music soon, the trio still had no lead singer or bassist. That's when they came across their singer Mariana Aparicio on TikTok, inviting her to join the band. Sometime later, they found their fifth band member, bassist Jeremy Diaz, and in no time, the band of five were ready to release their first song, Japanese Denim, on September 2, 2020. Now Lost in Limbo has played a plentiful of venues throughout Texas, such as the Mixlin Festival in McAllen and the Cozy Concert in Austin. Last year, the band was invited to play at Michelle Vallejo's campaign, 
where they performed numerous songs including Crush on You and Falling in front of Senator Bernie Sanders. Lost in Limbo lead singer Mariano Aparicio, who writes the lyrics for the band, says her mom had a big role in inspiring her passion for singing and explains her motivation behind her lyrics. I don't necessarily write about myself. I like to take in people's experience and like friends and family and then put it into lyrics. Playing a variety of genres such as indie and house music, Lost in Limbo has captured the hearts of 930 followers on Instagram and over 100 on TikTok as of last week. This sound can be accredited to producer and drummer Joseph Golez, who says he gets inspired by listening to other producers and bands curate their songs. It's a lot of technical stuff that you have to work around and uh, making it sound good is way more difficult than just like banging on some metal. Gola says Lost in Limbo plans to throw a free show at the Gremlin in McAllen sometime in November. For news on upcoming shows, you can follow their Instagram at Lost in Limbo. For KVAQ TV in Edinburgh, Dathan Thervinio. And that's a wrap for us today. Make sure to watch us Monday through Friday on VCast monitors and social media. For KVAQ TV, I am Tristan Cortez. Have a great week, Buckettos.